Hey, good Friday morning, everyone. It's uh, Chief uh, Weather Geek, Eric Wilhelm, here with a quick video blog for you as we go towards the weekend. Uh, an update on the snow and the cold and uh, winter's wrath coming into the valley. Now, that said, I, I don't mean to be too dramatic. We're not expecting a big storm here. Uh, but there can be some impacts over the weekend. You're certainly going to be uh, bundled up for the next week before we get a little bit of a break, it looks like, from the cold heading into next weekend and maybe a little bit beyond. Let's uh, start this morning with a look at the radar and satellite across the region. Our weather quiet. It's going to be this way all day today. Uh, some high clouds will skirt in on the western fringes of our uh, east coast storm, so it won't be perfectly sunny most of the day today. It'll be a veil of milky clouds up there, but no big deal. It'll be a quiet day, just a cold day otherwise. Pretty remarkable system, though, in the uh, southern U.S. Look at the snow as far south as Birmingham this morning and Jackson, Mississippi, and even close to New Orleans, it's trying to snow. They had snow in the Houston area overnight. In the last evening, uh, San Antonio, Austin had, <laughs> had some snow, so some pretty far south latitudes getting in on the snow this morning and uh, winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings posted for a large chunk of real estate here uh, from southeast Texas up through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, into the mountains of North Carolina, and actually winter weather advisories and a winter storm watch uh, issued this morning all the way up uh, the I-95 corridor from Baltimore to New York to uh, Boston as well. That's all because this uh, front has uh, stalled and an area of low pressure is forming along it and this is going to bring some wintry weather to many places in the east. Now this will not directly impact us but it will uh, have an impact on the system that will impact us as we go into the uh, into the weekend. Again, no direct effects, but uh, the two systems, the one coming in from the west and the one on the east coast, uh, will interact some, and uh, that will impact how much snow we get and the timing and all sorts of stuff like that. I'll show you in just a second, but look at how cold it is across a lot of places this morning. Teens and 20s into northern Texas this morning. We are in the upper teens when I recorded this at pretty close to 9 o'clock this morning. So let's get to the... Uh, to the weekend and, and start talking about the timing of things here. Here's one of our models. What I think is going to happen here is the snow looks a little slower to me than it did yesterday, partly because of the East Coast system kind of holding up what's going on to the West. And so the timing has changed just a little bit. Uh, still a dry morning tomorrow. If you want to run errands tomorrow morning, no problems. In fact, all the way through 1 or 2 o'clock, we're probably dry tomorrow afternoon. And this model even doesn't have it snowing in most of the region until sunset uh, tomorrow evening. That may be a little slow, but still, that's the trend, is a little bit slower. So most of the daylight hours on your Saturday, I think, are, are looking okay. Uh, the, the issue with snow perhaps impacting uh, untreated surfaces and making things a little bit slick, you know, those issues really don't start cropping up, I think, until sunset or after on Saturday. This is 7, 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, 9 o'clock. And notice what this model is doing. It kind of has the snow falling apart or trying to fall apart a little bit as we go into the evening. This may be the right idea because of what's going on in the East Coast. You know, this uh, East Coast uh, situation may effectively kind of, you know, when there's snow out here, may effectively kind of rob some of the moisture from this system swinging in from the West. So that's something that we'll have to keep an eye on tomorrow, and that would limit our accumulations at least for the initial round of snow pushing in uh, tomorrow uh, late afternoon and evening. Now, I still think we're going to get into more of a lake effect regime tomorrow night. This is midnight tomorrow night and heading into Sunday morning. This looks pretty snowy. So anyone doing some traveling overnight Saturday night and into early Sunday, uh, there can still certainly be some impacts. Then the snow showers will wind down. It looks like fairly early in the day on Sunday. I think we're pretty much in the clear by midday at the latest on uh, Sunday. So again, uh, this East Coast system could be good news for us, especially if you're doing some traveling. Maybe not so good news if you're really, you know, a snow fan. But all this moisture out here, when this when this happens, this tends to kind of shortchange systems trying to come in from the uh, from the west. So I uh, have not changed our overall ideas as far as numbers go, but uh, with a couple of caveats. First of all, the hour by hour breakdown of snow chances on Saturday. What I might have to do today is, is lower the numbers a little bit here. I, I lowered them a little bit last evening. I might have to lower them a little more for the mid-afternoon. This might be more like a 20. This might be more like 30% chances by 2 and 3 o'clock. And even by 4 o'clock, uh, we might not be above a 50% chance of snow just yet. I'm really starting to emphasize more towards the evening and overnight as being the, uh, the highest chances for some snow. Here's the map I put out last evening. I'm not going to change this uh, right now. 
Uh, you know, we give ranges for a reason, and you know, a lot of people only hear the higher number. Um, but our forecast for the vast majority of the region is one to three inches. Uh, I think it's going to be hard. We're going to be hard pressed to get three in a lot of this light blue area. Uh, definitely more like an inch or two, I think, uh, for for most places. Can't rule out three, but I would emphasize the lower end of the range in a lot of the light blue area. Uh, we have in the darker blue in the northern reaches of our viewing area, up towards uh, Kinsman and Mespo and kind of Route 87 and over towards Greenville, New Lebanon. We have three to five up there. Again, five might be pushing it, but I could see where, you know, with some lake enhancement, we get three or four inches uh, by Sunday morning in a lot of those places. So uh, the map is the same, just, you know, wanna emphasize that we give ranges for a reason. One to three does not mean three. Uh, you have just as good of a chance, if not a better chance, of getting one as opposed to three out of our weekend snow. Now, another trend in the uh, modeling in the longer range is we're going to break out of the deep freeze next weekend. Uh, so, boy, harsh cold middle of next week. Might not get above 20 on Wednesday. But uh, notice that we, you know, we kind of thaw out here a little bit. And uh, so, you know, even though this is a pretty impressively cold pattern on this model, and here's the... The other long range model I like to look at, you know, there's there's a thaw coming in about eight or nine days. But uh, we've got to get through some pretty harsh cold during the middle of next week first. All right, of course, I'm going to be keeping an eye on things all day today. I'll full update this evening on 21 News at 6 and 11. Meteorologist Andrew DePaulo will also have an update on the hour long midday show on 21 News. And of course, on Facebook and on Twitter, I'll be chiming in from time to time today. And I'll probably do a Facebook Live video uh, with an in depth look at the weekend and another chance for snow next week. You know, before that harsh cold comes in during the middle of the week, we've got a good chance of accumulating snow again Monday afternoon into Monday night, maybe Tuesday morning. So I'm going to have a lot, of, a lot of detail on that on my Facebook Live this evening. So tune in for that and hope you have a great rest of your Friday, everyone.